thing with students is they just memorize math. It's just a whole bunch of these rules. It's all these rules they're trying to memorize, and then they get all these rules. So I have a pre-calc student, and I gave a test first semester, and they had two fractions. And immediately when they got the two fractions, they got a common denominator. Unfortunately, they were multiplying the fractions. Because in their head, they just have all these rules in their head that they're trying to memorize, and they have no idea what their meanings are, and they don't have a strong number sense. And so what I'm trying to talk about is a conceptual understanding. So I chose, I'm not, I'm not supposed to teach multiplied fractions. They're supposed to come into high school, hopefully, knowing that stuff. But we, like Joe said, and we're supposed to do that in middle school. They're supposed to have that coming in. But we spend a lot of time doing fractions. And so I took an example of multiplying fractions and talk about a conceptual understanding because I think you'll all understand, or you'll probably all be familiar with this first one. So I actually took my technology. I took my phone when I was looking at textbooks and took a picture. This is from a textbook on how to multiply fractions. It said, if you want to multiply one-third times three-fifths, you put them next to each other, you take the two numbers on top, you put those on top on a new fraction, you take the two numbers on bottom, you put them on bottom of a new fraction, you multiply the two numbers on top, you multiply the two numbers on bottom, and now you multiply two fractions. They don't tell you why you're doing that, it has no conceptual understanding of what's going on, and at this point, remember, students are just learning how to multiply fractions, they're used to every time you multiply two numbers together, it's getting bigger. So there's no understanding on why are these, when you multiply these two numbers together, is it getting smaller? And it would be really hard to start talking about that with the way this textbook's laid out. So I took that exact same example and I said, well, how can I teach that conceptually? What would a, a common four type problem? So I took the one third times three fifths. And so I said, well, we're going to look at it as an area. And so it's a length times a width. So we have three parts on our length. So we're going to divide the length of our rectangle up into three equal parts but we only want one of them. So the kids would physically shade in one of those three equal parts. And they say, okay, now we're going to multiply because length times width is the area of a rectangle. So we're going to multiply it by this width, but the width has five equal parts. So we're going to split that width up into five equal parts, but we only want three of them. So the kids are going to choose a different color and shade in those three. And where they overlap gives us our numerator. So we want three parts out of a total of 15. That's where the 3 fifteenths come from. Now the teacher can also talk about, look, when we multiply the length times the width, the part we're left with is smaller than the original part we started with. We're getting a number that's less than we started with because we're only shading those first three parts. So that'd be taking something that's just a rule and trying to have some conceptual understanding so the students can move on and really have a true number sense on what's going on. The other one I want to leave with, I think, yeah, this is someone else's slide. And so I had two students in Algebra 1 this past month, and they were talking to each other. And the one girl was just adamant. She's like, no, no, no. When you put two negatives together, you get a positive. When you put two negatives together, you get a positive. Because she has these rules. And unfortunately, she was adding them. And it's not just about memorizing a whole bunch of rules, because when they start memorizing a whole bunch of rules, the students are getting all those rules mixed up in their head. They don't know what situation to apply to what rule. And that's where the conceptual understanding for Common Core will hopefully take until they have a true number sense. All right.